Let's bring in Chris Whalen, uh, very suspect. Of Chris, you walk in now, Chris, that's it. He's counting up. Did I hear a rumor that your book is in second printing? Yes. Is this public knowledge? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Why are people buying your book? Is it they're afraid of the American financial system? I think they would like an explanation of how we got here, which, as you know, is why I wrote the book. It's a history of A little American context, uh, not just the last 20 years. And, <clears throat> no, that's two and centuries. That's, that's really, I think more than anything else, uh, the, the positive feedback I get is thank you for giving me at least a frame of reference. Some people take issue with my uh, uh, opinions. Interpretation. And but uh, I think overall it's been well received. Okay, here's a research note. We're going to do dreaded chart in a minute because we just got this late. I love this. ING Bank plus Alley Bank. The happy Dutchman driving ING <laughs> off a cliff back home had decided they wanted a big U.S. bank out mm. in editorialize to solve problems. ING paid up for funding over the internet and wrote Alt A loans. Yeah, exactly. I, I was thunderstruck <laughs> with the comedy, the human comedy of GMAC renamed Touchy Feely Ads Ally, right. buying what seems to be a successful retail experiment. Your thoughts? Well, Internet banking has yet to prove itself to me, Tom, for the simple reason that you have to pay up to get the customer and keep them. There's no stickiness. There's no branch right. relationship, nothing. So these two banks at one time were actually shoveling money into the furnace when they were really focused on Internet. Even GMAC had their experiment in Internet banking. But Ally did it out of necessity. Once the government saved them, they essentially had to go somewhere else other than the commercial paper market to fund their auto. to the Internet. Well, they use deposits now to fund auto receivables. At first, I was horrified by this. The returns weren't obvious. But, you know, auto paper is short term compared right. to a 30-year mortgage, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, Ally has gotten the bank cleaned up so that we give them an A, which is good. They still have issues upstairs, though. ResCap, all of these mortgage exposures that were making the bank look very bad right. two years ago, they moved when the Treasury did the restructuring. And ING Bank, is it, I mean, it's just sort of like there. It, well, it, as I said in our note, it grew for the sake of size. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew a lot of the people in that platform several years back. They were basically the high bid for deposits, right. and they were either buying agency paper or making all day loans. <laughs> and again, yeah. no branch network. They were buying market share. Uh, the guys in Holland wanted at least a $100 billion bank. That was their instruction. Did they get it? Yeah, yes, they did. Okay. But it was one of the worst performing thrifts in the exactly. country until exactly. they turned down the gas yeah. and the marketing spend. Yeah. And now it's okay. But the real issue is what is a core deposit, quote unquote, over over the internet worth. That, that's what it comes and down to. the answer's to. not that much. Dreaded first chart here. Let's look at the banking industry in general. I don't get that merger. Someone will have to explain it to me. Uh, Waylon, in search of revenue, here's the <laughs> Keith Friet Index. I mean, as you look at the operating story you're so negative from, right. and I got an email today from a, uh, a Southside analyst that really took off after you. He just doesn't agree that it's that bad out there. What kind of revenue growth do you expect from banks? Uh, flat to down, depending on the institution. Down, really down. Well, volumes going into the end of the year were okay. We had refinancing. The banks went out to every consumer that was refinanceable and at least asked a question. And so today, when you look at the opportunity facing your average branch manager, mm -hmm. it is the lesser credits. You figure 40%, maybe half of all housing stock today is not really financeable given the criteria that you see at Fannie and Freddie. I, so what the, your opportunity is, is reduced, is, is the basic yeah. thesis. We're going to have headlines, too, here for the entire hour on uh, the soap opera playing downtown. Of course, very serious matters with the former uh, or the present head of the IMF, Strauss-Kahn. Mm. Uh, just a headline here, Strauss-Kahn should be held in custody. That, according to the prosecutors, is that gets underway. No cameras in the, in the, in the courtroom. Uh, Chris, when you look at, at, the, at the banking uh, business and you look at the challenging revenues, anecdote, I went into my bank, which I do like three times a year. It was like Walmart on steroids. I got tackled. I had so <laughs> many. They were very nice. Yeah, they were but very nice about all... it. Look, I think of banking as an extension of retailing, Tom. Every vendor you deal with in the retail channel today is greeting you at the door, right. asking you how your experience is, even before you have it, and then they want to fill out a survey before you leave. <laughs> Let's bring up chart two here, Rex. Bring up chart two. This is important. And this is something Chris Whalen and I would know about, and boy, the late Mark Pittman would be all over us. Mm. The reverse split delusion or illusion, pick your word. Well, at least it didn't go down <laughs> that much. It's a $44 stock rocking, but nobody ever shows a chart that when you do a 10 to 1 split, 
it's gone now from 500 down to 44. I feel better at 44 than I do at four. What yeah. do you think of reverse splits? Uh, as a banker, I can't think of one that's ever worked as Thank advertised. You. So, you know, basic, I always recommend against them if a client ever asks me, uh, it's better to buy the stock. They're, they're going to reward you better. But, you know, let's face it, Citi was the biggest stock on the big board. They had reasons to try and get the handle in the double digits. They succeeded. But it comes at a cost, obviously. If you were a shareholder the day before the effective date, you're not very happy because, obviously, the thing it's is traded dilution. off. It's a But I think Citi it's would have traded dilution. off anyway. You've got to realize they have the same problem as the rest of the street. They've sold assets. They had $18 billion in revenues. Uh, first quarter, which was okay. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd rather see a two handle. But uh, the question is, what do we have going forward? Oh, excuse me, I'm gasping. It was a clean air in New Hampshire. <laughs> it just killed also the $2 Pabst Blue Ribbons. Okay, too much information. Bring it up here. Uh, loan demand. I, I, I can't figure this out, Chris. I'm getting a lot of different opinions right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, stronger load demand for CNI banks, but it's by no means anywhere near normal, is it? Well, you is have right? the survey the, the Fed conducts loan officers how's loan demand when i talk to these same people they say they shake their head and say no what i hang my hat on is the actual financial disclosure from the banks because it shows a, a downward trend at least weakness and let me give you an example one of my positive recommendations has been pnc for years they right. managed that institution magnificently after they bought nat city they were actually slightly bigger than u.s bank but for the past two years tom they've been shedding assets and managing that institution very defensively they had to pull uh, provisions out of income uh, or out of reserves so to get back into income to hit their number. They did a few other things that some of their larger peers did to hit their number. What right. do we do next quarter? What do we do the quarter after that? There's, there's, there's not much low hanging there. fruit left. How much are they leveraged now? I mean, as a general rule, they were the, the, the European banks were 30 to 1, the U, <laughs> U.S. banks were 25 to 1, 22 to 1. Right. How, what's that ratio now? Uh, well, on bank balance sheets, leverage hasn't come down that much, but you don't have the non-bank sector anymore. The shadow bank You don't have gone. the shadow bank, so right. the assembly line is broken. If we don't fix that, Tom, then we can't right. turn this economy around because housing will continue to deflate. Yeah, earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, I spoke with uh, Glenn Shore of Number, and I asked him about mortgage lending and if it's still hard to qualify. It's amazingly difficult to qualify. I hear the anecdotal stories from all types of colleagues around the street, and people with really good quality credit are having a tough time refinancing without putting cash in to get their LTVs down. I think every bank ha has uh, raised the Olin FICO score and lowered the LTV. So they're, they're playing with it. Do you agree with Glenn on oh, that? Oh, totally. And what you see this, particularly what he just described in the commercial sector, you have an income-producing property, everything in the building's leased, Tom. Right. But when you come up for refi, they still want you to put more cash in, the lender, to give more of a credit buffer against future default. And these are properties that are not distressed. Yeah, let's bring up Ed Lazier. This is my op-ed of the week. I want to switch gears here uh, with you a little bit, Chris Whalen. The economy that's behind that banking business, this is Lazier of Stanford, one of the nation's great labor economists, why the job market feels so dismal. First of all, that number, 14 million rounded up, the combination of low hiring and large unemployed, 13.7 million means a competition for jobs as fierce. A worker is one third as likely to find a job today as a zillion years ago. That's right. I mean, the banks got to compete in this. Isn't the history in your book inflation? Isn't the history consolidation? Well, it is, and that's the natural tendency of human beings. No matter what you say about Keynesian economics or neo-Keynesian, right. people retrench when they see that demand is falling. This is just a natural human tendency. They pull back. And my fear is that we're going to see more of that this uh, second half of 2011. It's deflation. Go back to Irving Fisher, 1933, which is the playbook for Ben Bernanke. You have reflation driven by the central bank, but you also and have then, to have restructuring. You have to rebuild the financial system so you can create credit but didn't, again. But didn't Ben Bernanke, this is criti critical, critical question, folks. Didn't Ben Bernanke do that? Well, didn't he's he done his part. No, no, they haven't restructured at all. That's the problem. We haven't and fix the gray market securitization, the private sector, if you will, for all sorts of financing, and the banking system's been shrinking for the past couple of years. Should Mr. Diamond and Mr. Pandit do their own restructuring? Should they take the responsibility on, or do they need an institution to assist them? 
No, I think they, they are doing it. City has done more than the other three. That's why I still have them on a neutral by far. But the other three are doing it quarter by quarter, week by week, and that means that we suffer in terms of growth. If you restructure quickly, yeah. then you can restart things quickly. That's the trade-off, very Where clearly. Where are the mergers? I mean, we were talking mergers at the end of the year last year, and, you know, they're there. There's Skype and this technology stuff, National Semiconductor. Right. But Where's you don't the see big, it in the banks yet, Where's do you? the big bank merger? Well, the accounting still is your biggest obstacle. If you have two organizations that, if you really do fair value, have no equity left, then almost by definition you're doing a recap. You're not just doing a merger. And the problem is when a healthy bank looks at a bank that's not dying, but they still have some problems, right. the accounting is very difficult for, in terms of getting all the auditors, both buyer and seller, to say, yes, this is fair value. Here, here's a sobering note, uh, a rather chart uh, of the day. This is jobless claims. I was up and I had a tough time at Dartmouth College, thanks to Danny Blanchflower and great hospitality up there. And you can see this nice trend we've seen, and I would say this directly relates to that animal spirit you need in your financial system. You can see that little curly cue over there on the right side. That's not a good trend, is it? No, and it goes to the point about demand. Right now, consumers are trying to delever. You know, we went through a period where you had too much leverage, but the job market was artificially stimulated by very low rates, zero rates. Now, here we are, we have basically the same interest rates, but you see very little demand, and it's because of the change in, in perception, the change in the animal spirits, if you will, that they're not willing to take on the debt, they're not willing to hire workers. Everyone I talk to, every vendor I call on, when I have my other hat on representing right. IRA, is trying to cut cost and stay away from anything having to do compensation. They'll do partnerships, uh, how, they'll do whatever, but they don't want to bring on more comp costs right now. How linked are the travails of small, regional, and big banks to the housing market now? Have they delinked? Well, to an extent, there's three kinds of banks in this country right now, Tom. There's the smaller, stronger banks who never had a problem dealing with their losses. They had enough income to just deal with it and keep going. Right. U.S. Bank comes to mind. No games there as far as earnings and loss reserves. You have a group in the middle that were badly hurt, and there's still eight, 900 of them on the FDIC problem list. Some of those are going to get bought. Some of them are going to end up mm -hmm. curing themselves. But then you mm -hmm. still have a large number of institutions, especially the big ones, that have these outsized legacy costs uh, that they're going to try and deal with over time, and that means they're not going to participate in supporting a recovery. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful summary. Chris Whalen, thank you so much. Thank you, Coming Tom. up, folks.